Hello and cheers. Welcome to Chicago Reacts. My name is Lauren. Today I am going to be reacting to a much requested creator from our recent poll. Um, it is a video by Civi11. It is actually one of the videos that was requested for us to react to. So this is uh, the first part of his Dusk series. Um, I don't know anything about it. I, I actually have absolutely no context for this at all. So I am excited to see where we're going with that. I am going to enjoy my drink. I, because, but because I don't have much context, we can't play a typical drink, drinking game. So we're just going to go back to the old classic. If I say something is cool, or if I say something really stupid, like that's the the best way I can, I, that's the, my easiest ones to, to go for. So drink up, get your drinks. And let us begin. Okay. It's kind of Minecrafty, isn't it? The Crispy Creep it's Show. Time, kids, to talk about 2018's game of the year, the incomparable, the one and only Dusk. I talked about it in a video a little while ago, and I wasn't even going to do a series on it, but then episode three dropped, and my eyes were opened to its majesty. Having all three episodes gives you a good perspective of the game as a whole. We can't just go straight into episode three, though. We gotta really dig in deep. Dusk is a shockingly intricate game. This ain't some fly-by-night, five bucks on Steam retro FPS throwback where it's a bunch of sparse maps and some boring hmm. guns and endless waves of enemies. I mean, there's plenty of guns and monsters, don't worry. <laughs> and if you're worried about spoilers, I would suggest clicking away from this video, buying Dusk, playing it, and then coming back and watching the video. You can get Dusk from Waste.Money. I'm not kidding, that's real. So Dusk comes from New oh, no. Interactive. More specifically from these three madmen, David Zemanski, designer, Dave Oshry, producer and doggo enthusiast, and returning champion Andrew Hulshall doing the music. And if you want a quick review of this game, it's amazing. If it couldn't stand tall among the other giants of the FPS genre, I wouldn't be doing a series on it. I'm not calling this Pro Dusk. I'm not a pro yet. I've had the full game for like a month and a half. We're still playing on Cerro Miedo though. What the fuck do you think this is? When you boot up the game, you're greeted with I this. And it's like nostalgic acupuncture in my brain. Render mode software? Sound boomer card? Headphones are a good idea though. The sound of the music, uh, how can I do one of them chef kisses only in audio? It's just mwah. Okay, story. There is a story. You are Dusk Dude, not Dusk okay. Guy, like I said in the other video. Oh. And you're a treasure hunter looking through the abandoned town of Dusk when you get jacked by some. So. The abandoned town of Dusk looks like the Children of the Corn town, doesn't it? Sack-headed hillbillies and put on meat hooks. But since Dusk Dude is an absolute badass, he breaks free, retains 200 health, and melees these rednecks carrying chainsaws using sickles. These guys are called Leathernecks. They're simple enemies that charge at you with a chainsaw. And if you're playing on Cerro Miedo, they close the distance quick. Ah. You have about a second between the swing of the chainsaw to get out of the way. The mages are a little easier to deal with. They throw fireballs and shout the name of classic FPS games at you. Heretic blood. Then we get the Black <gasps> Oh, Phillips, that's funny. Who I hate. They're not as bad on lower difficulties, but they have these projectiles that go absurdly fast, making them a priority target. One well-placed shotgun blast can usually take them down. Dusk Dude, while not being shown off much in the game itself, fan art, and fan art that became official art, shows oh. like a cross between Caleb and Beta Gordon Freeman. The game introduced I love it when that happens when like the the fans um are they six when they successfully make something that the creators are like you know what yes actually this is in fact my vision I pr I like that a lot I it makes it things feel a lot more um reciprocal and it makes it feel like the creators are actually you know listening to the fans which I think is super important in any kind of media um it's like you take in criticism or content suggestion and like you can kind of incorporate it if it fits i i love that this is you to a bunch of important mechanics in the first room like secrets which are everywhere and necessary to your survival there's a pistol hidden right over here just like in classic fps games like trespass or jurassic park you can pick things up and throw them like this saw blade this barrel this gas canister What's this doing here? Well, like in real classic FPS games, specifically build games, there are cracks in the wall that can be blown up to reveal secrets. Ooh. 
This gets you your first shotgun and destroys the intended level progression. I'm not complaining. So you pick up health packs. Your armor isn't armor, it's morale, which you get by picking up treasure because you're a treasure hunter. Skipping the first areas by way of this secret that takes you to the surface, that's not what I do. I go back because there's other secrets and a second pistol. Of course you can dual wield pistols. Ooh. There's a shotgun in this first secret and I encourage everybody to find it so you can go upstairs and get a second one. Because you can dual wield those too in that Terminator 2 one-handed way that Arnold nearly broke his hand doing on set. But this is a video game so it doesn't matter. The pistols don't do a ton of damage, so now you've got two shotguns that are just right. Exactly as impactful as they should be. Nice. They have just the right rhythm. Instead of reloading, you can press R to twirl your gun. <laughs> I love that. This is an effective <laughs> melee attack. Sometimes it gets you killed. But either way, but fun to do. Important game mechanic. Right next to that, however, and I'm going for the achievement in this playthrough, so you're gonna see this a lot, the soap. Pick up the soap, throw it at enemies, it's an instant kill on pretty much everything. You'd think this would destroy the game's balance, but it takes a certain amount of precision to be able to grab this stuff while moving. I don't know if the movement in Dusk is the star of the show. It's like classic Quake movement That's fun. up to 11. You're already fast and agile. Strafe hopping takes you straight to plaid. The game encourages moving this fast, and somehow the <laughs> doesn't get annoying. I can't explain it. Good sound design? Not to mention when you're in midair, you can flip around. So you can strafe yes. jump 100 miles an hour while backflipping and shotgunning cultists in the face. Okay. Don't be fooled into thinking you're playing some Quake clone, because I was at first, too. That's what I thought. I thought it was a really tightly designed Quake clone with some blood influences. A little redneck rampage over here. That's one of the tricks the game pulls on the player. Fundamental to understanding Dusk is that it lulls you into thinking it's a cheap retro FPS throwback that rides on the coattails of the classics. It knows what you're thinking. Special mention goes to doing a slide when you're running and you hit crouch. I love it. That's Ooh. the first secret, though, where you get your first power-up, the Fast Fire Totem, which is self-explanatory and lets you go nuts on the enemies for maximum cathartic bloodshed. <laughs> My microphone decided to attack me there. <laughs> oh my gosh, I think that's what happened. I wasn't. <laughs> Hello. I. What was that? Yeah, I think my microphone just decided to attack me randomly there. We're fine. We're good. I, I, I also remember I'm pretty sure I said something was cool and didn't take a drink. So that's what I was trying to do to rectify that. And then, um,. Technical issues. Hit crouch, I love it. Back to the first secret, though, where you get your first power-up, the Fast Fire Totem, which is self-explanatory and lets you go nuts on the enemies for maximum cathartic bloodshed. Oh, hello. There's so many little details in this game that I have to talk about. I'm not finding all the secrets because I don't know where all the secrets are. I know where all the secret levels are, and we'll get to that really soon because the first secret's in E1M2 down on the farm. If you didn't catch the secret fast fire power up in level one, you get it right at the beginning here. Oh. And since you've got two shotguns. Oh. That's just cathartic. That's just cathartic in a way that maybe should disturb me. Um. Oh, I love the look at the little skeleton in the corner there. Huh. Little skeleton guy. Hi. If I ever need to point out how low poly or low res graphics can be a legitimate art style, the first game I'll bring up is Dusk. Everything is so cohesive that I barely notice it when playing. All the trees are a flat texture I didn't notice, I was too busy blasted cultists with my cube barreled shotgun. These windows that are just textures? I didn't even think about it till I was re-watching the footage. The atmosphere is too good. Okay, here's a pro tip. Light a fire. You don't need any tools. You're dusk, dude. Just look at it and fire happens. <laughs> nice. Kind of viscera lying around. Hold it on a fire and eat it. Eat it. For 25 HP. Now let's not spoil everything here. Except this entire level, because even though the secrets aren't that hard to find, they're important. 
This one especially because you get the most powerful weapon in the game out of it, the Riveter. It's your multi-purpose death dealing explosive barf and murder machine. You want to get it because it's going to come in handy for the Scarecrows. Yeah, those come to life. Oh you know, no. I've played a video game before with Scarecrows in it that just pop to life. You pass by this one near the start of the level and it does nothing. But then this one shows up and will wreck you if you're not careful. He's got a fucking double-barreled shotgun. He hits hard. Especially on Sarah Mieto. And my prescription is two rivets. I hate scarecrows. I hate them a lot. Oh my gosh. Like there's like I don't usually have there's not like many things that freak me out or just make me very uncomfortable, but scarecrows are definitely one of those things. Like store like horror stories with scarecrows in them, or like just even like the little ones, like the cute ones that like people put out on their uh on like for you know, fall. Like those, I'm just like, ugh, why is it looking at me? I, ugh, I don't like them at all. So anytime, it's always effective uh, putting scarecrows in something for me. I'm just like, it's not, and mannequins, I'm fine with mannequins. No issues with mannequins at all. It's only scarecrows. I don't know why. Riveter ammo is everywhere in this episode if you're willing to look for it. You even get it in non-secret areas pretty frequently. Your first somewhat big battle in Dusk is in this level, and I don't like to do it without a Riveter. There's a lot of people. I see what he was talking about, the hook thing not being annoying. It kind of like just blends with the music. Also... So we're going to the secret level, the Dim Slough, a little swampy level that gives me the opportunity to talk about something really cool, which is six degrees of freedom water movement. Sure, it's not a huge deal. It's cool and I enjoy it a lot. I don't know why more games don't do it. Oh damn it, I forgot about the cigar with the S crosshair. You know, the S thing you used to draw in school. The cigar gives you a point of health from every puff, which is not how cigars work. Ten points off, fucking <laughs> draw. Nice fucking- what, what is the six points of water movement thing that he was talking about? Does that just mean you can move around a little bit easier and, like, spin? I- what does that mean? Bottle honk honk. Old time religion. This level gets a lot of love from me. First, because its atmosphere and color palette are beautiful. Second, it's when the game's awesome music started hitting me. Just listen to this. All right, I might have to try and find some of these for my Halloween playlist for next year. This level is important because it really gives you your first taste of what Dusk has to offer in terms of gameplay that's not your standard retro FPS fare. Just a taste, though. Dusk doesn't want to show its hand too early. A good decision, because it makes those later episodes hit even harder. So you're just digging deeper and deeper into this town, and suddenly the intoxicator shows up. Shoot at him till he dies. That's really all I can say about that. Ugh. You might have noticed that you get a slight morale boost from quaffing beer. So I made it a rule to get as drunk as often as possible. And it's not like Duke Nukem where he gets drunk off one tall boy, the fucking pussy. Uh, it makes it kind of hard to aim and shit with, with, the, with the camera moving like this. Yo, I forgot about the, the rats. There are rats and they're like... Uh, they're in the sewer, so uh, I'm gonna do a, do, do a sewer count on that one, too. Yeah. My pet. <laughs> You'll pay for that. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Jacob, by the way. He's the cult leader. We'll see him later. Much, much later. In the Steam Works, you get a super shotgun. I'm sorry, you seized a super shotgun. Don't think you're getting those Rise of the Triad jokes past me, Dusk. Uh-uh. The super shotgun is everything a double-barreled shotgun should be in a video game. It's big, it's powerful, it's got a really meaty sound to it. Boom. Oh, I like that. 
and it turns anything weaker than a leather neck into giblets. Sometimes more than one at a time. God, yes. <laughs> like I said before, there are secrets everywhere. Steamworks has the greatest one in the episode, in my humble opinion, and I'm showing it off to you out of love. Good secret, ton of shells and machine gun ammo. I didn't even talk about the machine gun. It's an FPS machine gun. It does what it needs to and is satisfying to use. I'm not knocking it. Further into that secret, there are six rivets. Cool, nice, the dusk symbol. He is all around you. Creepy, sure. Creepy mm. because this room is lit like a death scene in Creep Show. <laughs> So maybe you won't notice this ladder here that brings you up to... Oh baby, there it is. Ugh. Swim hungry, motherfuckers. Okay, this game's been pretty easy so far. Episode 1, as you'd expect, is easier than the others. Since this is Cerro Bieto, Spanish for no fear, enemies and projectiles are faster. And you're gonna start feeling that right about now. Hordes of Black Phillips. Fireballs from every direction. Four. Four scarecrows coming out. Oh, no. You get the hunting rifle in this level, a practical addition to the arsenal for long. <laughs> Let's simplify it and say that it does the same kind of damage the super shotgun does, except from across the map. It's great for two shotting scarecrows and one shotting lower enemies that might be giving you trouble. This game is so cute, it spawns like a dozen wizards down there thinking I'm gonna snipe them. <laughs> nope. Ooh. Hunting rifle ammo is precious and I'm not wasting Lovely. it. You might be asking yourself, what is the crystal of madness? I didn't know at first either. Let's kill two birds with one stone. Actionable pun detected. <laughs> hup, 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 and all the way to the end of the level to shit. Here we have the fork maidens who fire green shit at you that hurts a lot. They take like three hits from the super shotgun to go down. Oh, wow. Not these ones, though, because that crystal of madness makes whichever monster you throw at it turn on the others. Nice. It's awesome here because I lose track of which one I threw it at. Yeah, <laughs> I have no idea. How do, ladies? They weren't. Human. The Cuddy Mine is a dark, haunted, dangerous place. Look at that spooky ghost. But take Ooh. a listen. Let the game really sink in here. When you get the key and open a door to a walled off passage where Jacob laughs at you. You enter a room, you haven't spawned a bunch of monsters, you plow through them. Only to hear at the very end, before you leave. No, rather, before he lets you leave. Next, Ooh. Dead of the Night. A nice little arena of a level, unless you count all these secrets. Pretty fun jumping around, sniping, getting the crossbow, a weapon I severely underestimated at first. Don't be stupid like I am. It shoots through walls and enemies. Oh, that's cool. That. I ooh, There you go. That's cool. I love a crossbow. I love a good crossbow in any video game. Um, And the crossbows tend to be, like, for whatever reason... If I am playing a video game, the crossbow is like the one thing I'm actually pretty good at using. Um, <laughs> I'm terrible at, I'm like, I, I don't know, for whatever reason, it's just easier for me to see the reticle or something when I use a crossbow in a video game. So I'm always there for it, always. But we're drinking because it said something was cool. When you pick it up, check this out. <laughs> Oh, hello. Oh, and the music is so good. After this, you enter Ooh, two at once. Worthy, which is still another hole in the ground in a shitty backwoods town. And ooh, boy, it looks like them Duke boys is at it again. Damn that straight. voice, that voice is so good. Again, me conserving rivet ammo because there's always a good use for it besides bosses, like this. Oh, I can go through this cool secret here and find the sword, which can block projectiles and has a super attack. Swords! Have enough morale. But then the game pulls the rug out from under you again, because when you exit this secret, you're going straight to Fragtown. Oh. That town being Dusk, population 666. 
Population 6696. 42069. Population 6669. On brand. Six, six, on brand. Meme. Meme. On brand. Puffers. On brand. Meme. 42069. Present. Pregnant. It's fine, New Blood. I've just busted your balls. You do you. You get the mortar in this level, too. That's the last weapon you get for the whole game. Wow. Yeah, you can get every weapon in Episode 1 if you're a decent secret hunter. Don't take that as a knock to Dusk. It was rumored that they had a BFG-like weapon in earlier versions, and it didn't work out, and uh. because the balance and implementation of these weapons is so good, I don't care. New Monster, The Soldiers. Easy. Couple of stray bullets, and they go down like they're made of straw. I mean, not magic straw. Because, yeah. This is my personal favorite level of Episode 1. Good thing I don't start the level on intruder mode. Really helps to have a sniper rifle. Oh, wait, no, there's one right here next to the start. Thanks, Dave. Nice. Map. Lots of little secrets. Lots of environmental details I really like. Oh, wait, no. We also have to drink whenever the character drinks. Um, I don't know. I don't think I made that rule clear at the beginning because I didn't know he was going to drink. But that is one of the rules. Oh, hi. Yeah, okay, but since I am, the crossbow shoots through walls so we can hang out here and deal with this fork maiden, and she can't do shit about it. There's a teleporter out here that takes you back inbound, so this isn't cheating. Now, there's one fight in here that I want to use as an example of Dusk's more frantic moments, where you walk in, the walls open, and you're surrounded. But not in the serious Sam way, in the Doom and Quake way. You even get a fast fire power up, and forget what I said about the machine gun earlier. It's awesome, it's great. Oh, hello. There's such good sound design in this game, honestly. It does sound really good. Like, all the little clips and things that he's put in is amazing. And the music is so atmospheric. Like, I, like, in that ghost town scene, I was freaking tense. And I'm just like, and I, that's like in the minute and a half that he was there. I was just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Like, that's excellent. That's so well done. And I feel like a lot of times music and sound design in games and movies is overlooked. And it really shouldn't be because it's so, so important. And I love that it's good in this. Even in episode one, where it sounds like backwoods horror, it's... So good. Really unnerving. I'm gonna get deeper into this stuff later. You guys have to understand, episode one of Dusk is a blast. But episode one is the... A blast like a shotgun blast. Is that a pit? Is that a pun? Weakest episode. By design, I imagine, since I've played the rest and I can see what's been built on the foundation. We've still got one more obstacle between us and the second episode. Creations. The bosses. You'd better know how to strafe hop or else kiss your ass goodbye. You even get a taste of the crazy scientist from episode two. Mm. Just look at him, mm. No. Now, I'm not saying that you guys should be cheap about this, but I'm gonna be. Well, half cheap. I'll kill the first one. Soap you good. <laughs> Why does the soap this work? It's only the beginning. Ugh. Okay. All right, that in fact does look like quite a lot of fun. Um, I, I wouldn't mind continuing watching that series and finding out a little bit more about him. And I understand why everyone likes Civi 11 so much. He seems like a lot of fun. Like I enjoyed that content. I enjoyed his jokes. Um, he's very correct about the music being amazing. Um, I like that kind of thing. That's really cool. So thank you for everyone who suggested that. Um, and for those of you who suggested that specific video is a good place to start um so uh, you know i i would not mind continuing this particular series and i'm looking forward to see what comes next thank you so much everyone for joining me um make sure you like comment hit that subscribe button that way you get the new content every day that we post um and 
if maybe if you can become a patron, like we really appreciate that as well. You get some extra content. You get to participate in polls. Um, you can have unedited content when it comes to the uh, movies and TV shows that we do. So yeah, it's a little bit of fun stuff extra for you. Uh, we appreciate you so very much. And until next time, cheers. Thank you.